Hi, I'm Basil Assaf and welcome to Pathology Dynamics. Today we will talk about COVID-19, the disease caused by severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2, which is also called SARS-CoV-2. We are all monitoring these days. I don't have a slight scan for COVID-19 like we typically do, but two case reports came out that described a lung histopathology associated with COVID-19, and luckily both have free access so I can share them with you. You can find the link to these case reports in the description box below. But before I discuss these two case reports, let's talk about a few basic concepts about the virus as well as lung anatomy, histology, and pathology that will tremendously help explaining the lesion associated with COVID-19. As we all know, when we breathe, air travels from the nose into the trachea. The trachea then branches into two major bronchi, which continue to branch into narrower bronchioles that finally open up into clusters of air spaces called alveoli, as we can see in this magnified image. And within these alveoli, oxygen from the inhaled air is exchanged for carbon dioxide that is carried in the blood. Alveolar histology plays an important role in facilitating oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange between alveolar spaces and the blood. Alveolar wall, also called alveolar septum, or septa for plural, is very thin, as we can see here. It is composed of a single layer of alveolar epithelium known as nemocytes, predominantly type 1 nemocytes, with fewer type 2 nemocytes, which is immediately followed by a very small blood capillary lined by a single thin layer of flattened endothelial cells, as we can see here. The very thin alveolar alveolar wall is crucial to facilitate efficient diffusion of oxygen and carbon dioxide to and from the blood. This image has a better schematic of what I was just describing. We have a very thin layer of type 1 nemocytes and occasional brick-shaped type 2 nemocytes, followed by a single thin layer of flattened endothelial cells lining a very small blood capillary containing red blood cells and other components of the blood. So what happens if you have damage to this alveolar wall? Damage to components of alveolar wall, for example type 1 nemocytes, will allow components of blood, including many plasma proteins, to escape into alveolar spaces, causing alveolar edema. Some of plasma proteins, primarily fibrin, will also polymerize in alveolar spaces and form thick bundles of homogeneous granular or fibrillar eosinophilic material lining alveolar spaces, and that's called hyaline membrane. Alveolar wall will try to limit this damage by proliferating type 2 nemocytes, and that's called type 2 nemocyte hyperplasia, to cover the area of damaged type 1 nemocytes. And if the damage is too severe and type 2 nemocyte hyperplasia does not work effectively, fibroblasts will proliferate in an attempt to wall off this damage, all of which are accompanied by inflammatory reaction. Although all these changes happen with good intentions to limit lung damage, they result in thickening of alveolar wall that compromise the efficiency of gas exchange and result in decreased blood oxygenation. This diffuse damage to alveolar wall with the formation of hyaline membrane is called acute respiratory distress syndrome or simply ARDS, A-R-D-S. Now, COVID-19 is essentially ARDS, and that's why the virus causing it is called Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2, or as more commonly known, SARS-CoV-2. It's an enveloped virus, and that's why washing hands with soap is sufficient to destroy this lipid membrane, subsequently deactivating the virus, and contains a positive single-stranded RNA. It is relative to SARS coronavirus 1, which was discovered in 2003, and MERS coronavirus, which was discovered in 2013. The virus infects nemocytes and macrophages by the binding of spike proteins to angiotensin converting enzyme 2. And most importantly, ACE2 is expressed on alveolar epithelial cells, or as we just learned about them, type 1 and type 2 nemocytes. And hence, the virus will infect and damage nemocytes and alveolar wall and trigger ARDS. As as we described in the previous slide. Now let's look at the two case reports of COVID-19 lung histopathology. This is the first case report reported in The Lancet respiratory medicine. This is a case of a 50-year-old man who was admitted to the hospital after developing fever and mild cough and shells, and then started to have more fever, fatigue, and shortness of breath. His chest x-ray showed evidence of pneumonia, and throat swab tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 on day 9 of illness. He was admitted to the hospital, and despite attempts to for treatment, the patient died 6 days later. 
On histopathology, we can see typical signs of ARDS. There is diffuse alveolar damage with evidence of pneumocyte disquamation, edema, and hyaline membrane formation. There is also interstitial mononuclear inflammatory cell infiltration and the formation of syncytial cells, which coronaviruses are known to induce. Here is a second image demonstrating the edema and the inflammatory cell infiltrates and some of the hyaline membranes. The second report is essentially similar. It's for a 72-year-old man who presented with fever and cough with evidence of pneumonia on CT scan, and then he tested positive for SARS-CoV-2 on throat swab on day 6 after initial symptoms. And similarly, again, on histopathologic examination of lung biopsy tissues, we can see diffuse alveolar damage with disquamation of alveolar epithelial cells and some reactive type 2 nemocytes. There is intraalveolar fibrinous exudates and loose interstitial fibrosis and inflammatory cell infiltration. And finally, intraalveolar organizing and polymerized fibrin. And with an antibody against the RP3 NP protein of the virus using immunostaining of the lung sections, we can see many of the disquamated alveolar epithelial cells are actually positive for the viral antigen. ARDS occur in a variety of mammalian species and due to a variety of etiologic factors that cause alveolar damage, such as septic shock, inhaled toxins and irritants, such as smoke, and oxygen toxicity. For example, here is a case from the archives of the Joint Pathology Center of a dog with ARDS caused by oxygen toxicity and septic shock. You can see a similar pattern of diffuse alveolar damage throughout the entire examined lung section, and at higher magnification, you'll start to appreciate the alveolar damage, the hyaline membrane formation, edema, and inflammatory cell infiltration. Here is a close-up of the damaged alveolar walls, hyaline membrane formation, and the diffuse inflammatory cell infiltration. And I will put a link to this case in the description box below. So in summary, COVID-19, the disease caused by the novel SARS coronavirus 2, is essentially acute respiratory distress syndrome that is characterized by diffuse alveolar damage and hyaline membrane formation with a mix of inflammatory cell infiltration, type 2 nemocyte hyperplasia, edema, and fibrosis. As always, I'm thankful that these reports are made available for free, and a special thanks to the Joint Pathology Center for the ARDS case in the dog. If you like this video, please click the like button and share it with friends and colleagues who may benefit from it. You can also view previous videos from the channel page, and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel to receive all new videos. Thank you.